survive off PayPal donations, but <laughs> look at my bio. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, you know, true crime is an advertiser friendly. <laughs> but anyway, though the group had splintered off, it still has left behind thousands of video content, as well as a lot of written material. So to date, Love has one uh, primary YouTube channel, features over 2,700 videos, and the group continues to release content on a daily basis. Their messaging is unlike other religious groups. It is openly brash, energetic, and foul-mouthed, able to insult members of their audience in one breath and tell them that they love them in the next. So it's different. Um, they are unafraid of offending each other. In fact, they love it. But within this group or cult was Amy, who is known as Mother God. So before this and before Amy was Mother God and found dead in some child's bedroom, Amy Carlson was a manager at a McDonald's in Houston, Texas. Other facts about her, according to her followers, was she loves sriracha. Beat Bobby Flay in cell phone games. And I kid you not, she has a close relation. I can't kid you not. <laughs> she has a close relationship with the spirit of Robin Williams, who provides her support with her spiritual counsel. I mean, yeah, um, if I had somebody that was like, I was close with that was a spirit, I would also want it to be Robin Williams. <laughs> um, I feel like that would be my go to, so I get you. But her followers also had many other facts about her. Oh, yeah. They claim that she is over 19 billion years old and has lived over 500 lives. She is in a constant conflict with Cabal, a shadowy global organization determined to keep humanity in a low vibrational state. I actually kind of love this type of thing. I know it seems like I'm making fun of it. It's just... Some of it sounds funny, but like I actually love like hearing about this type of stuff. Um, there's a lot of information too. It's going to be a little scattered, so I apologize. Bear with me. But in her most recent life, the one that had just ended, the cabal had tried to assassinate Amy nearly 600 times, but she'd foiled each attempt. The cabal is described as a group of minion reptilians and Anunnaki, ancient extraterrestrials and or Sumerian deities, depending on whom you ask. They are the global elite who are tied to the Illuminati, and they pull the world's sinister strings, orchestrating the dark sham that is the modern life, in which everything from wars to mass shootings and pandemics are all engineered to keep humanity in a feared state. Honestly, it sounds like a sick video game to me, but this is, um, what, whatever, love is what. Um, anyway, so keeping all this stuff in mind, a high-level overview in Amy's role in love has one lore according to YouTube reveals that the belief that Amy Carlson was a lot of people, they thought she was God, um, but she was Jesus Christ, Cleopatra, and Marilyn Monroe, among with other historical figures. So she's the real deal, you know, she's everybody. Um, she was the queen of the mythical ancient city of Mira before it had its violent fall, during which time they say Donald Trump was her father. I mean, killing it, she established a lot clearly, but what, you're kind of crossing worlds there, but okay, um, manager of McDonald's included, but now Amy's goal was to lead 144,000 believers into the awakened 5D pain plane of existence, leaving behind the shackles of the broken 3D world. Those left behind will be destroyed, and their energies will be then recycled into the 
understand what any of this has to do with Amy's rapid decline in her health and ultimately her death. Um, it's important to understand their belief system. Um, all of the world's external suffering had been played out physically upon Amy's body. According to their doctor, and Amy's body acted as a filtration system, cleansing the world of negative energy and low vibrations, causing her indescribable physical suffering. At various times, Love Has One followers even claim that if Amy died, everyone on the planet would then die. And that didn't happen. I mean, I, I'm all about, like, vibrations and, like, energy. I, I totally believe in love that stuff, but, um, yeah, there's, like, a level where it gets, that it, go, that it goes, I don't know. Um, so, our followers were meant to shield her from damage through their free faith and right action. Amy Carlson was not supposed to physically die. It was always a possibility but not their plan. So, yeah. Let's just keep going. It's a long one, I told you, because we gotta, like, build up to it and, like, what everything is and explain the scenario. So, you know, let me just have a little sip of orange juice here. <laughs> so, in the beginning, kind of the origins of Love Has One, Amy Carlson was a sweet and pleasant country girl. The eldest of three sisters born in a small Kansas town outside of Wichita. According to Linda Haythorn, Amy's mother, parents were separated when she was a child. In 1984, Amy was nine years old, and her mother remarried and moved to Oklahoma City. Her father remarried around the same time, and a custody battle ensued. In the meantime, Amy split her time between her mother and father's house, where she, as family, and even, even John Castillo, father, God, would later describe, had a difficult relationship with her stepmother. Amy's teen years were much like the rest of her peers, um, though her mother recalls that she clung to childhood aesthetics like unicorns and decorating her room that way. She relocated to Dallas and later um, flourished in a suburban middle-class lifestyle. She never really liked athletics. Um, she found a creative outlet in her uh, choir, and it plays. Um, she, was smart, she was smart, and people always often discussed how she had like such an amazing voice. She was popular, charming, but not a dominant personality. Her mother said that she was never even a leader, but that did come, obviously, much later. According to Love Has One folklore, Amy's Latin the divine powers had already begun manifesting at this time. Archaea faith of one of Love Has One's longest standing members recounts being told by four or five years old, Amy had already begun talking to angels, and her parents had taken her from church to church, church, seeking insight to from pastors. In one instant, in one instance, she was said to have had an outburst during a sermon. The pastor, yelling that the pastor said something that she knew was a lie, said she. Jesus, saying, you're lying, you're lying, and that she had to be removed from the church, and that they not use her former name in her presence, but both of her parents say that this never, ever happened. By her early 20s, Amy had three children, had been married, and divorced once. Her family asserts that she became increasingly disconnected to her children. She wasn't very maternal and did not have that kind of warmth and did not have a problem leaving her children with other people for long periods of time, that type of 
Cristo um, Blood of Christ Mountain Range. So named because of their deep scarlet color at sunset and their jagged peaks. Um, so in more recent years, um, New Age spiritualists, heroes, UFO enthusiasts found the area and claimed that the spiritual energy there makes it a prime location for interdimensional portals, a place where a higher level of communion with the divine is possible. So in short, Creston is a lot of believers. <laughs> so on December 10th of 2007, Amy had wrote that she'd released her 3D relationship, left her husband and the kids, and as soon as she had the funds, she would move to be with her mountain man in Colorado. And it wasn't long that before she did, permanently leaving her family behind. January 14th of 2009 marks when the very first Love Has Won YouTube video went out, where White Eagle speaks in a calming, loving tone over the track, Closer to Heaven. He told viewers that they were loved unconditionally and to look inside themselves for his own divine likeness, and that if they did so, joy would overflow. So soon, producing video content was kind of a day-to-day -day for them. Um, initially, it was like short videos, short clips, um, and they talk about how they were cloaked starships. I, I don't know. Um, and most of these videos were initially uh, written as the Galactic Free Press and were either audio only or featured her just speaking in the camera, like news style, updating viewers on interstellar spiritual plot lines that she claimed was playing out all around them. So, um, at this point, people didn't think that her view was very original, um, as she picked up most of her items that she was discussing from forums, chat rooms, and newsletters, and she was speaking on events just based on what was written and how she understood them, right? The idea of Ashtar Command, for example, featured prominently in early addresses. Um, essentially, an Ashtar Command is a extraterrestrial law enforcement organization that would save humanity and started in the 50s. But as she grew into a spiritual leader and into that role, I guess, her teachings became more of her own because she was kind of just like recycling old content. Yeah. <laughs> so Amy's relationship with White Eagle did not last, as we kind of mentioned. It wouldn't. And this marked the moment where she went from supporting him to being like an individual and like it's just 
the scenes. Um, she was a very big drinker. Uh, apparently she was very impulsive, mean, and, um, frustrated with anyone that was kind of working with her or against her. So soon that version of Amy, the very domineering and self-destructive version, took center stream, center stage and like live streams and stuff. So this sweet charismatic woman that everyone was like believing to be this celestial being was actually like a super just rude drunk. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, one of the crucial turning points that led Amy down this path of self-destruction came after she'd met her final twin flame, the last father god, which is John Castillo. So Castillo first appeared in Love Has One videos in 2018. After that, the group was much more structured um, and the culture that remained was consistent until Amy's death. It wasn't like adapting or changing at this point. Castillo had a long, dark ponytail and for those watching streams regularly. His arrival was like really sudden and out of nowhere. Um, he became a fixture though, typically seated beside Amy in bed, um, just like chilling on a laptop, <laughs> smiling, <laughs> um, shirtless. So, um, over time, he'd grown a beard, often um, would wear black and white, and was he did so because he wanted to represent that he was the yin to her yin. I don't know. He had a love for old school country and he himself sang and played the guitar in a lot of the videos. This really just sounds like a hippie group. Um, yeah. <laughs> Why is everyone in this story like, gotta go? 
say I broke everyone's noses, everyone on the planet. Like, okay, sure. <laughs> My March of 2018 um, videos from Love Has Won uh, had updates from the first contact ground crew team. So it's like 10 members that would pile into a room together and speak to the camera for like 10 hours or a few hours a day, not 10 hours, wow. So these members were like always in person groups who assisted and protected Amy on her quest to help the world ascend. Most were quite young, enthusiastic, kicking off every video with like a group shout. Um, so these love streams was like watching a weird session of the real world, people said. Um, they would always have colorful tapestries, joking together, taking questions from live streams. And um, mother and father God were no longer in videos super regularly. Um, sometimes they appeared, but over time they dwindled and then completely ceased altogether. Um, they explained that she couldn't because if she did, I'm sorry, <laughs> they explained that Amy couldn't be on video anymore because if she did, the viewers' bodies would explode because her vibration had become so high and everyone that was watching was too vibrationally low. So they'd all die if they saw her just from a video. Um, the, the, so most of the content was about mom's ongoing battle against the cabal. And on August 1st of 2018, viewers were informed of a dark witch that attacked her. Three weeks later, the audience was told by another member um, that an assassination method had taken out, um, during which a sword sliced one of her hearts. I cannot. The um, etheric have been doing surgery for many hours. She's throwing up, has diarrhea, and is shaking. So the narrative was getting really paranoid and um, intense. And Amy was always described as being under a con constant dark battle with forces of assassination attempts. And yet, what it was was just her drunk on a guitar talking <laughs> before and like shirt with her boyfriend shirtless. And now it's like, we're battling, guys. We're battling. Like, bombs have it issues. So this continued on until 2019, um, in which then Amy was. Uh, Stuck, struck with a dart, and her uh, spleen and pancreas were infiltrated by the cabal. Uh, the content of these live stream periods um, mirrored the Book of Revelations. Followers were talking about Amy breaking through several seals, after which she'd move on to transitioning seven trumpets, then seven bowls. Like, um, yeah, so goalposts were moved every day. People would like predict what was going to happen. And by September 13th of 2018, she'd actually processed 99.3% of the world's negative energy. Wow. She wasn't here for 2020 though. Well, actually she was. I don't know. Anyway, the rate of growth was exponential as she approached 100 and her pain this just sounds like a crazy, like, video game I'm reading to you. 
actually remains a supporter of Love Has One, and he says that statement was spoken with no violent intentions or bloodlust or will to do any harm, merely a friendly warning to those who refuse to all of the positive ways of nature, law, life, and existence. Really? Because it didn't sound positive, and it did sound like you were going to kill people, but okay. Sure. He then stated what he meant was that those people will be cut down by the forces of nature and the universe herself. Um, so on top of the generally threatening and really intense uh, live streams and such, Love Has One members regularly expressed racist, homophobic, homo racist, homophobic, and anti-Semitic views in their live broadcasts. So they were kind of like a joke. Um, where at the at the like top level layer where they wanted to bring you in on like love and light and positivity, they were actually just like horrible people. Um, these ran around from bigoted racial comments to in-depth alternative history surrounding Hitler and the Holocaust and like how to make that work, apparently, as per this article. So for critics of Love Has One, statements like these appear directly at odd with the group's portrayal of themselves striving to live fully in love, as I just stated. Like, what? <laughs> what? What? Okay. Amanda Ray, a self-described victims advocate and founder of the Watchdog Group, rising above love as one, has been outspoken in her desire to hold the group accountable. She says, for a non-profit organization that claims to represent love, their actions prove otherwise. This is a direct example of a dangerous, coercive control group. I agree. Um, one thread that ran through it all. The world's external suffering had to be played out physically upon Amy's body. Amy had to process all the negative energy, which meant that when followers were doing something wrong, they were causing her to physically suffer. If team members made a mistake, either Mother God or Father God might lose their temper on them in a spectacularly explosive fashion. They would either be punished or banished. Amy communicated with followers even if they lived in the house on Skype, and she would often rant and scream at people quite often, and um, her drinking, like I said before, got to the point she couldn't even really like walk around. It became so dire, but it was described to people as her medicine. Um, so they just let it... <laughs> and apparently that was the reason that she was in so much physical pain all the time. Um, not not people suffering. Um, near the end, she sometimes even had trouble keeping it down. She drank so much she couldn't physically keep it in anymore. And um, in her videos, she'd had slurred speech, would be erratic, have outbursts on house like mates. And in a video, she rails against members for not delivering her tequila promptly enough, saying, Where's my tequila, you dick horse? <laughs> I'm sorry. In videos. <laughs> That's not funny. It is. In videos and it's just like, <laughs> so, I don't know. In videos and communications posted on YouTube, we see members subjected to hour-long sessions in which they're criticized by other members in effort to Weed out the negative energies infesting the group. This was often called um, a game where they'd call it Find the Whore. These sessions could involve multiple members calling each other out for behaviors seemingly inappropriate, or they might just focus on one single person and like berate them until they cried. Why did people, it's because of that veil, like I said, that layer of like love and light, and you're like, oh yeah, high vibrations, like love, oh yeah. 
kind of share it, right? So both of them uh, have ties its followers to a crazy uh, story of struggle and the fate of hum humanity, right? And within the belief system, believers are soldiers of truth. They are empowered to feel that they are fighting the world's greatest battle. But how they carry out that fight is by consuming and sharing the group's materials. So, you get to become a soldier without actually fighting. Okay, so, by August of 2020, Love Has, Love has Won um, grew quite substantially, um, around 200 decadent inherents. Their reach was very steadily growing online, uh, with more and more people following all the time. Attracted a huge attention, especially in August of 2020, when they decided to set up shop on a Hawaiian island where 14 residents, including Amy and Costello, went to a luxury beachfront rental in a community. Residents there were very suspicious of them, particularly when Amy announced that she was Pili the Hawaiian goddess of fires and volcanoes, and the creator of the Hawaiian islands. So over a hundred followers, or so over a hundred people gathered outside the home, um, and things turned ugly quite quickly. The protesters were furious that Amy would be talking about um, being an apparition of a Hawaiian spirit, um, and they accused the followers of flaunting local local COVID restrictions. So Love as One's rental car was vandalized, fires were set on and around the property, and within a week, uh, the mayor actually got involved, telling him Love as One that they could not guarantee their safety. And locals were furious, saying that they're predators, they're not here to be part of the community. Um, and sure enough because they want to just start so much problems I guess um, love has one tried then to relocate to Maui according to oh no, love has one members took to the internet and live streamed in a video to the residents of the community Amy herself addressing them in a blunt manner saying F off I'm Peely bitch don't push me so Love as One tried to relocate to Maui, and according to the statement from the police, officers had confronted Amy and a few people at the airport, Miguel included, informing them that they'd have issues with their travel documents. So they'd um, made lodging reservations at an unapproved location, and after some discussion, all of the members that were staying in Hawaii had to go back to Colorado. So... <laughs> Days later, Dr. Phil decided to devote an episode to Amy and Love as One, featuring her mother, two sisters, um, Chelsea and Tara. Now, Amy herself, as well as two other Love as One representatives, um, participated via video call. The host, Dr. Phil, <laughs> uh, brought up several of the more well-known instances of Amy's abusive behavior. Among these um, is an alleged incident in where she mistreated a cat, as well as one in which she locked a distressed child in a closet repeatedly as a form of punishment, saying, you need to surrender, surrender now. I can't. So both Dr. Phil 
survivors of extreme alcohol abuse, opioid abuse, anorexia, and chronic ingestion of colloid silver that actually killed her and her body needed to be tested for a heavy metal, um, I think it's toxicity, so there was actually nothing that killed her other than opioids, drugs, and years and years of abuse, not eating properly. Thought that there would be this magical thing that come out of it, but no. Some members of the group don't really care because they're like, it's a body, it's a vessel, it's just a vessel, it's not her. So in their minds, they don't care. Others think it's going to be this wonderful thing, but in the end, that's all that came out of it. A lot of people within the cult believe that she has ascended into the 5D plane of existence, shedding her bodily vessel and has not died as people will understand it. She um, simply left her body. But there are other people who believe that they are receiving direct communication from her still. Jason Castillo says that his mother is still alive and she is breathing in that box. They love her and wanted to bring her home. And that is why they moved her body after she died and enshrined her because they wanted her to feel at home and to celebrate her vassal. So, in the immediate aftermath of her death, some familiar with the love has one feared that things might take an even darker turn and like Heaven's Gate beforehand that members would also die that she has died, especially because so many people were like, when she dies, everyone will die. So people were very concerned about that. Um, in November of 2020, during a live stream, Costello had told his members that they should be willing to die for her. And after her death, those old comments sparked new fears in others. Um, people were saying in the live stream to search for your true identity, your divine self. It cares about God. It cares so much. It will lay its life down for her like the rest of creation. But despite rumors um, and, you know, people on social media being worried about drastic measures being uh, taken, um, no ideas about joining her took hold, thankfully. But in the meantime, Love has one members have scrambled to adapt to her being gone, and in the process have splintered. The website has now gone under rebranding as 5D Full Disclosure, emerged as the current name, complete with a new web store selling spiritual surgery services. And um, the new URL and the former URL now redirects them to MotherEarthNaturalEssentials.org, which is interesting, or Mother Nature Natural Essentials, LLC. So since the core leadership group is gone now, a power vacuum remained, and the dynamic has changed. The majority of the members joined 5D Full Disclosure, where live streams are now seen do with people doing things like drinking from Starbucks cups, um, suggesting increased freedom in terms of how they spend money, how they can eat what they want now. Um, they can sleep a bit more freely. They aren't under uh, direct influence of a divine authority anymore. And they say that there is a lot of natural progression going on. The idea is that many of the rules and routines that were previously there to help shield Amy from spiritual attacks no longer applies since she has ascended. As such, a slightly more liberal atmosphere has taken hold. However, there are still spats and live disagreements and users yelling at each other, um, but they state that that just happens. Um, and it's periods of crumbling and rebuilding within like a family. And for a lot of former members who no longer are there, they hope that members of Love Has Won realize that there is different ways to spread love. You do not have to have a system of control, of abuse, of toxicity, of racism, of like they were 
say you do not abuse someone in the name of calling out bad energy or discussing things so negatively about other groups if you're trying to spread love. That doesn't make sense. It, they also state that love does not survive in guilt and should not be spread through guilt and hate. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so like obviously these people laughed and realized what did we just spend our time doing? But they do state that they love her um, and no one deserves to have died the way that she did. Amy's mother actually says as her firstborn she knew she loved her. She absolutely loved her. She was a human being. My dog is moving around a <laughs> lot. No one deserves to die the way that she did. I hope that people understand that this is what can happen when you get involved in a cult. I want to warn people of how dangerous this can become, as she was a victim too. Yeah. Yeah, there's also a lot of people that say if you are going into a group that like <laughs> you feel shares the same message as you the moment that group starts to try and separate you from your family from your friends dictate the way that you're doing certain things that is not a positive place to not put yourself in that situation um you should not have to surrender your identity or you know have a group try to compel you into doing things and manipulate like you like it's a great now that they have a platform where they can talk about that because this is a cult that was very new um well it was like really you know there's still obviously things going around but um yeah just be very very cautious and very careful you know i don't know what do you guys think it um it's interesting too because once she died it's not like her followers were like um you know uh, they, they were happy about it and they didn't want to save her because of these attacks and such so it's a really weird mind frame to try and step into but i don't know that is kind of the story of love has won and mother god dying um yeah it's not it, there wasn't a murder or anything you know but it's a really interesting cult case but again like most of these groups the control and abuse is such a heavy thing within it so yeah <laughs> had you guys heard that story before i actually hadn't i'd seen a few like instagram posts and stuff but i'd not heard anything of the sort before but anyway what do you guys think? Please leave a comment below. Please let it be positive. <laughs> um, I'm very curious your thoughts because it was a very interesting story, but also like, I don't know, pretty crazy to me. It's the history and the folklore.